So thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Sultan, for the kind invitation we, we received from our department in, in Belgium, where I have the, the opportunity to work with Dr. Himpens, who unfortunately has not been able to, to fly, but he has uh, asked me to apologize for his presentation, which is this one. So as you know, and the previous speaker explained it very well, uh, conservative uh, treatment should be, uh, let's go to the first slide. Conservative treatment after uh, leak on a gastric, uh, sleeve gastrectomy should be the, the main issues. Uh, actually, it is very important to identify, and this is a policy in the department, which are the factors related to the patient that might affect, like, such as uh, smoking, the, the gender, and uh, obviously revisional surgery. We don't do patients who are currently smoking and we, ha we ask them 100% of the times to avoid smoking for at least one month. This is one factor we have already noticed. Uh, many uh, strategies have been proposed to, to treat uh, leaks uh, after uh, sleep gastrectomy and one of them is the primary reoperation which could be a, a solution if you have a very septic and poor conditioned patient in which you have to drain. But uh, suturing the defect hasn't shown in our experience and in many experiences any kind of efficacy. So here is a very uh, short video showing uh, a, a leak after a sleep that was uh, not uh, found during the uh, reoperation, even with the methyl blue test but the patient got a drain and uh, it, it was uh, done and treated medically. So primary laparoscopic repair and endoscopic treatment. The previous speaker spoke about clips, fibrin glue, there are many repair, uh, reports about plugs, but also about uh, self-expanding uh, metallic stents or maybe a combination. We would like to, uh, to show our experience specifically in uh, sleeve gastrectomy but not in the overall uh, series in which could include uh, revisional surgeries and gastric bypass, uh, which has been a recent paper already published. So between October 2005 and uh, July 2012, 27 patients uh, suffered and uh, were affected with a leak after primary uh, laparoscopic sleep gastrectomy. Of course, all these patients have to, to follow a primary management, which includes TPN, uh, antibiotics, fluid therapy, we control strictly the parameters and according to our protocol and policy, we do a CT or echo drain of the leak if it has, uh, uh, if the lamel has not been, if the lamel has already been removed, uh, for example, when the, the, the leak develops in a, in a not early setting, in a superacute or chronic setting, and after that, uh, I have to say that 12 of these patients had a reoperation with the resuturing and none was affecting. Here, I want to show you a video where you can see here in the upper part of the stomach a leak. We see the staples. And this is the, uh, an upper part leak, which were, where, as you know, is the most frequent place on more than 95%. We continue the endoscopy. This is the sleeve that has been performed three days ago and we can go down and we go to the pylorus, this is already the antrum, and we can go to the duodenum. This is a leak that is gonna be treated and the policy according to our uh, institution is the use of stent. The combination of um, conservative uh, management, including CT or echo drain, plus a stent. Here I would like to show you the procedure which is performed by our endo uh, endoscopist. And here we can see in the, in the video how uh, according to some references we can do with the fluoroscopy, such the needle which is uh, holding the exact place uh, and giving us the exact place of the, of the leak, we can deploy uh, by uh, uh, fluoroscopic control a standard stent. We use ultraflex stent and to remove the ultraflex stents, our experience has shown that you, you need to use a polyflex stent for one week in order to remove then both stents in a second uh, endoscopy procedure. We can see here uh, again a deployed stent and also in these images uh, the deployed stent and how it has been uh, covered uh, the, the leak. Uh, so in this series of primary sleeve gastrectomy 21 patients uh, heal with the stent treatment alone so it's a very high uh, rate
rate of patients that, that don't have to go to the OR as long as you have drained the leak and you have treated the leak with an uh, appropriate stent. The other uh, patients had a second procedure. Recently, some reports have shown uh, a high percentage of uh, reoperations. Baltasar described this uh, technique in open surgery. Uh, recently, this uh, month, uh, Dr. Chevalier from Georges Pompidou showing up to a 30% of total gastrectomies after reductant and chronic uh, resistant leaks uh, to treat the leak or even more complicated leaks like uh, gastrobronchial fistulas. Uh, in the department, there's a huge experience in the ruling placement on the laparoscopy, and this has already been performed in more than 16 cases with very good results. With, uh, with all this. This is a very, very, very short video, or no more than 20 seconds, I wanted to, to show. So you always have to dissect the, the, the upper part. The upper part is where you're gonna have the leak. This patient had many endoscopies, had many, uh, uh, many uh, endoscopic treatments, even with glue. And here you have to, to dissect the complete and anatomize all the EG junction. This is the esophagus, this is the, the EG junction which has dissected. You have to, to avoid uh, any injuries, but you have to dissect all the posterior part without injuring. And this is how you, you, can, you can replace and put a limb which will have a, an, a, an effect on the pressure, on the rule limb, and it will decrease. What we have seen is, for example, that after a leak, when you place a rule limb, the ruling is functioning, but after a certain time, the ruling disappears in its functioning and the normal uh, transit goes back to the sleeve uh, that had the patient uh, before once the fistula is held. Uh, there's more than 18 patients uh, experience with a 100% leak. So the complications was related to the stent placement in 15 patients, mainly nausea, draw wax, one preparation in the beginning with metallic stents when removal, that's the uh, policy ultraflex, polyflex, with a good uh, length hospital stage, and the overall healing, including the ruling, has been almost 100. Other authors, as the previous speaker mentioned, like the group from Nicola Basso from uh, Italy, from Rome, already used this experience. Many other reports uh, have been shown, <coughs> and my conclusions would be that leak could be avoided by reducing the risk factors and including technical endpoints during the procedure, of course. Primary reoperations have not shown to benefit in our experience unless you need to drain the patient, for example, because you don't have a CT scan and put drains, but don't, don't, probably don't, don't need to do any suturing, it won't be uh, useful. And surgery could be considered after failure of the stent placement after uh, by placing a, a laparoscopic uh, ruling. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, a very nice overview. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for an elegant presentation. Uh, I read your publication and it had 47 patients. Some of them were not leaks after sleep. And you mentioned in the publication that 15% of them were treated operatively first by laparoscopy. Yeah. My question is, in the sleeve gastrectomy, 21 patients, 27 patients showed today, how many of them had surgery before they had the stent placed? And what do you think the effect of having the surgery first on the healing with the stent? So in this sub-analysis of the overall series, which has uh, been published this <coughs> two months ago, 12 patients of the 27 had a reoperation in a primary sleeve. And uh, the reoperation consisted in on suturing the defect, recognizing the defect, but no healing after the reoperations, and they moved to the stent placement. But how do you know that the reoperation hadn't made an effect? Meaning you could not say that the, the patients healed with the stent only because they had something else. No, no. I, I agree. It could be the, the same discussion we, we could have with the previous speaker. What is the effect of the clip when a leak closes after 38 days? Mm, I agree. As long as you apply some technology, clips, uh, sutures, on a, on a defect and you do it uh, smaller, I agree that as a concept, you probably decrease the, the output through a hole and, and obviously you help for the suturing. But what is sure is that these 12 patients had to go to a stent because of the unhealing. And we say that because some of them had uh, no healing after seven, 10 days. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I think a drainage per se is not important uh, uh, more than the complete drainage, proper drainage. This is an, another important issue. The laparoscopic re-exploration. 
could give you an, a very good uh, a drainage, especially if it is multi-culated uh, uh, abscesses or uh, <laughs> multi-healing, uh, multi-leakage. Uh, the other thing you can do, of course, the stenting during laparoscopic exploration, which also can help you in testing your, uh, your uh, technique of repair. And the, the most important, I don't know, but that's my question actually, what type of stent you use in your technique? Is it fully covered, partially covered? And what right. are the complication yes. of this stent? Yeah. Th thank you for your, for your kind and, and nice comments. Thank you very much. Of course, the laparoscopy gives you a, a better dissection and, and lavage of the whole cavity. Depends on, the, on when and the timing is crucial on, on these patients. For the third uh, uh, comment and question, uh, we used uh, from Boston Scientific's Ultraflex stent, so it's covered. And after that, you can remove it by using the uh, polyflex. Because sometimes you ha there's a lot of granulation, we put a polyflex, and after one week, the granulation has almost disappeared, and you can retrieve both at the same time. This is the, the policy from uh, the, the endoscopic uh, department, from especially from Dr. Verhofstadt, who uh, has uh, uh, gained a, a huge experience uh, on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Our